Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. I decided we'd start this day showing you off Ursan because I, I want to show more players and I was doing it before and I kind of stopped doing it accidentally. So I figured we'd start here. It doesn't really spoil too much. You can kind of see what he is and what he's about while we talk about some other stuff. Now quickly, I don't think the last video went into sub boxes properly. Um, very, very annoying at the time. I know this for a fact because for a start, I subscribed to myself on my own personal account and it never actually appeared in my sub box. So that was fun. And not only that, but there's an automated tweet that YouTube sends out to my Twitter account when a video goes live and I just think it never actually happened. So that's good too. So apologies if you didn't see the last video. Um, you know where to find it now, but don't worry, it does exist. I didn't take a break or anything like that. So yeah, let's get into the episode. First up, we had our cup game against Esbia, um, full strength side, and this was about as dominant a performance as you're ever going to see from us, really. Uh, a 4-1 win. Bravo did score a penalty this time. He missed two against them in the league. Ursan grabbed a pair and Christian Lever with a goal. Mads Vilsom did get one back for them with their only shot on target of the entire game. Little unfortunate there, but um, as always, we really struggle in those situations. A very good performance to put us through to a cup semi-final. But that wasn't really the big deal. The big deal about this game is the fact that Odense knocked out FC Copenhagen 3-2 in the same round, which means that we have not got a clear run to the final, of course. But we can now, if we do win some games, avoid Copenhagen in the cup. And there's a real chance of us making another cup final because we've been drawn against Odense. Then again, they were good enough to knock them out. So there is that. They might have played a weakened team, though. In the next match, we only beat Olborg uh, by a single goal scored by Mariano Bravo penalty, which is a bit unfortunate because I think we were good enough on the night to have several more goals. Possession was very much in our uh, wheelhouse in this one. We just kept the ball from them and strangled the game. We're getting very good at grinding out wins, and that's something we really couldn't have done earlier in this save. Matthias Hansen put in a man of the match performance today. I dropped Santos to bring him in. 79 passes completed in this game. His pass completion was excellent, but as was Carlos Antonio Harding's in that game. I think I've got 93% pass completion in this match. The lad is good. I've got to start calling him something else though because Carlos Antonio Harding is a proper mouthful. Let's just call him Tonya from now on. Next up, we travelled to league leaders Copenhagen and we were roundly beaten 2-0. We didn't create a lot really, although we did create two of the best chances of the entire match. Probably should have done better. Verbich was just running the show. Konate was doing a good job. They mostly shot from range and both their goals were... Uh, well, they weren't that... Oh, no, I think they were fairly close range. I can't actually remember. Um, but the point is, we played all right. Um, and maybe on another day, we could have taken something. But unfortunately, uh, for the rest of the league, this win for FC Copenhagen won them the title with six games to spare. Um, there is a lot of ground that needs to be caught up before we can start challenging for these kind of things. And that's going to be the main challenge for us in the years to come, I sense. And our final game of the little run was the first of our four straight league away games, uh, which you're going to see one of in today's episode. But you notice, a 2 one win away at Norgeland before Christmas would have been absolutely unthinkable for us, to be honest. They were that good um but look at them now they are truly woeful they actually took the lead through alexis vega got a bit fortunate but he scored the goal and after that ursan just ran the show in the second half another pair of goals for him wan shishi the dictator doing some naughtiness getting himself sent off for two quick bookable offenses and they still didn't really pressure us towards the end of this game so what i think has happened with nordland is that they've got a different manager since after christmas and it has completely destroyed their team and all of that leaves the league, amazingly, looking like this. We have a game in hand on some of the teams below us. We're playing Midtjylland today and find ourselves four points clear in second place. Other teams have been taking points off of each other, and we've been picking up some points from those home games and the good away win at Norgela. Now, the four straight league away games is going to bring us back down to earth, you'd feel. Um, but still, it's nice to occupy second place at the moment because that would be a very nice Europa League place for us. Imagine coming second this year. I don't think we will. I think fourth is more likely. Uh, I think our best bet for the Europa League is probably still the cup. But Nordjylland have gone from being two points behind FC Copenhagen to being 28 points behind FC Copenhagen. They did actually win their last game, beating Bromby, I think it was, 3-0 uh, with their first... I think it was Bromby, I didn't actually check. So they're not actually bottom of this group, but they're really struggling. Despite having two of the highest scoring players in the league, both Taubleib and Bjorn Furge are both up there with 20 plus league goals each and they're still struggling. Ursan right in there as well with 22. I think there's a real chance of him being the top scorer in the league this year, uh, which is sensational work from the lad. He's really stepped up. Now, today's game, obviously it's going to be Midland away. We kind of know what type of style we want to play against them now that we've got a win. We know that we're going to sit a player on um, Mikhail Duland. Unfortunately, it won't be Juan Shishi, so maybe that's a problem we could have later down the line. We then have... Um, Odense at home in the cup in the last Lycom. So you're actually going to see a Lycom in the cup, a cup game which could see us get to the cup final. I don't know who would play just yet, but that's going to be massive for us. If we can get to a second consecutive cup final, that would be pretty impressive. So for today, we're going to keep persist with the idea of keeping Svenningson on the bench for now. Um, I want to keep him happy, but I don't want him playing at the moment because he just hasn't been performing, putting in some really poor shifts, whereas Ursan and Bravo from the penalty spot mainly have actually been sticking the ball in the net. We might give him a chance later down the line, but for now, in this important game, I really do want to go with our strongest players. Shishi, um, suspension, so he's not going to be playing today. I'm thinking possibly we move Caleb Morley in there, and then we bring... Um, 
see how we bring tanya harding in here we might have to change the nickname here right that's better make things a little bit easier for us during the games uh, he's gonna play in the middle there with caleb morley also if we can gonna bring back pat curtain yeah i think he got suspended so that's fine Fairly strength, uh, fairly full strength team today. I do wonder how we're going to cope though without Juan Shishi in that role. Something I might experiment with uh, over the summer um, is the idea of perhaps moving the attacking playmaker role back to somewhere like here and then using a different role up here um, because I just don't feel like we're getting the best out of the players that play in that attacking playmaker role when they're playing in such an advanced position. That's the one area of the team where there just doesn't seem to be quite the same level of uh, quality. Uh, the midfield area generally, but you know, Shishi's holding up the field there. On the bench, Karatala, Cormio, Santos, Svenningson, Safi, Kovalchik, and Zahidi. Right, so we've got Caleb Morley marking the right guy. Now, someone told me that there's a little drop down or something in here that allows me to... Ch no, there isn't a drop down, is there? No, there isn't. I, I, I don't know. Someone said in the comments that there was a drop down arrow or something that you could press that enables you to change the league table. I don't see a drop down arrow. You can drop one for the league table, but that doesn't change the league table that we've got up. <laughs> that just... Yeah. So I had the hiccups too. So I don't know what you mean by that, because there's no drop down arrow here that allows me to change the league table, as far as I can see anyway. I really do apologize for the fact that I have the hiccups right now. Anyway, question of the day. And today's question is this. What is the favorite tactic that you've ever used on FM? For me, this is a fairly simple one, and it has to be the Christmas tree of doom um, because of how long it took to make the damn thing. I just sat there for like an entire day, um, and that's a lot for me anyway, on a Saturday afternoon with um, the Kazakhstani team. We were with a team, and already after literally a minute, we're behind here. Paul Onowachi with the goal, and Tam... Tammy Abraham is playing for FC Midtjylland. That's kind of interesting. Unless he's still on loan from Chelsea. It, it could well be the case. Um, good ball into the channel from Poulsen. Nobody tracks the run of Abraham. He's very, very fast. And nobody's catching on to Archie at this point. Straight across the box. And that's in the back of the net. Not what we wanted right now. But yeah, Christmas Tree of Doom is definitely my favourite. We had a lot of success for that on Outcast to Icons. But yeah, let me know your favourite tactics that you've ever used on one of your saves. Oh, Save from Hamid there. Okay, chance to come back into this game, perhaps. I think that the lack of Shishi is going to make a huge difference for us today. Hansen? Oh, my goodness. We're getting some joy from corners. Okay, it's been fairly even so far, uh, but we do trail, and that's kind of important. But we've come from behind before. Not get Smidgelam, to be fair, but right. We need to find Rogers Jr. now. This is his moment. Morley. Oh, dear. Caleb, mate, come on. Oh, I don't know. We just don't seem to have the same level of effectiveness as we did in that first game, and I really do believe that's down to the lack of Juan Shishi. He really is so important for our midfield to function properly. Um, we, we, we need to look for that. Um, Tonya and Morley haven't been quite up to it. Morley, Ursan's through, and it's saved by Hamid. That's, that's better from us, though. Ursan really does seem to be in form at the moment. Picked up by Morley. Here we go. Ursan's through. No, hey, pull it across. Bravo! How? Mariano Bravo has to score there. He's really only been scoring penalties, ten, penalties for us lately. That was such a good opportunity again. I feel like tactically, we do have the better of them. Um, we certainly know how to play them, but we've just not been able to actually get the chances today and the goals. Ursan, use one of the... Oh, bravo. Oh, lovely stuff. Just as I criticise him for playing poorly, we're back level in this game. Mariano oh, Bravo with the goal. Ursan with an assist. He must be up there on the assist chart as well. Nice work from Rogers Jr. to pick out Ursan. I actually thought he'd wait for one of the other midfielders, but he's just spotted this lovely run of Bravo. Nobody tracks him. Lovely first time finish from him. And it is one all here. Again, apologies for the hiccups. It's very annoying. I think we've been more than involved in this game. I think a draw would probably be a fair result right about now. We've got these options here. Moskutsa sometimes looks for those passes uh, in behind. He does a good job with it too. These are the kind of balls I'm on about. Oh, sometimes those come off brilliantly. Tonya. Rivera. Oh, that's poor. That's really poor. On a watch. Now, we've, now they've got men over. Hulman. Don't let them get that back pass cross. Well played. Diniev. Get him out of the box. Ah. Oh, that's fine. I am starting to wonder about this team a little bit and the idea that maybe uh, the Carrillero role isn't great and maybe just another central midfield, but one that's set to support and try and win the ball in those areas might be better, uh, better suited for the style of play because I think no matter who we put there, they don't seem to perform that well. Morley's doing a great job in Shishi's role today. Honestly, I'm fairly happy with the way this game's going. We're at one all away at Midland. If we got a draw here, that would be a sensational point for my money. Um, they're one of the main rivals for us really at this point. And to take some points off of them, which is essentially what we're doing, would be very, very pleasing. See if we can improve them for the rest of this game. Give them a slightly different role in this one. Hansen, because I, I'm trying to get the best out of a couple of positions that we're not really doing. Bravo's through! Square it! Holy hell. We've got the lead away at Midgeland. And I think, personally, that we've deserved that. They've not had as many long shots as perhaps they would have done, but they just haven't hit the target enough. This is glorious play from Bravo. He and Ursan today have made a very, very good partnership. Uh, I don't know who puts this ball in behind. I think it's Moskutsa. Spots the runner Bravo. Nobody tracks him. And I actually thought he was going to shoot, but very selfless to put that ball across for Ursan. 23rd goal of the season, and we lead away at Midgeland. This would be a huge win. Now is when we move over to retain possession. 
I'm also be very interested to see if the rating improves for Tonya for the rest of this game. Poulsen, lovely, but oh my god. Bravo, he's through. Oh, that was a very, very poor effort from Mariano Bravo. He could have maybe put the icing on the cake here. Fourth goal. I would still take a draw if we managed to get to that point. Oh, well played, Konate. Wait, what? How did Morley get... Caleb, mate, you've got to stop doing this. I think he might have committed that other foul before as well. Diniev, over the crossbar. Right, let's just try and hang on now. Morley has played well. Um, very, very well, in fact. Um, and we haven't really got a lot of options off the bench to really play that. Although, no, 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 we'll, we'll leave it how it is. Hansen's not been excellent, so we'll get Santi on for a little run out. The strikers have been fantastic. Really, really pleased with them. But I still think that maybe giving Svenningsen a run in for... They've literally got identical systems here. I'm going to bring him off a of Bravo, just because I'm so pleased with the way Ersan's playing. And I feel like he might have another goal in him today. You never know. Juland. Tonya. Right, here we go. Santos up for Svenningsen. Can he impress me? He's done well off the bench for us in the past. Just going to make the changes. That's poor. That's very poor. Poulsen does well. Abraham's through. It's probably got a bit too wide. Oh my god, he's hit the cross. Uh, he's hit the post. That was very good from him. Oh, Onowachu's clearly got a bit of target madness about him. Abraham is clearly an absolute danger man for them. Uh, oh, they're looking. We're looking threatening on these balls over the top still. Ursan's not quite got the pace to get there, I don't think. They had a change at the centre back situation. So that's interesting. Uh, Ursan into huge amounts of space. Finds Svenningsen right touch. Finish. Oh, saved by Hamid. Tough one again from Svenningsen, but at least he's hit the target. A win here really would give us a proper good chance at actually coming second in this group, which would be truly amazing. Ersan, oh, I thought he was going to slip around the corner. I think he did try to be fair to him. They are trying to get Svenningsen in. Abraham, well cleared. He's really their main danger man now. He has to be. Juland, cut out by Caleb Morley. Lovely pass of Svenningsen. Ersan leads to look for somebody. Morley's getting into space now. Can he find a ball? He could, oh, wins us a corner. Well done, Caleb. That's fine by me. Hang on, clear the ball a couple more times. Juland, uh-oh, watch out for Abraham. He's through. What a tackle. What a tackle from the number 16. I think that's going to be it. 10 seconds to go. And I think we're about to get a win. Not only a win, but a win away at Midgerland and a win away at Midgerland in which we've come from behind to get the win. That says a lot about the character of this team. We really are creating a lot. For some reason, we're watching, I assume, the physio or something cut Abraham off the pitch as part of this highlight. I don't understand why. But that's just cost us another minute of time. Konate's ball up the field. Leva. And that is the final whistle. We have won away at Midgeland. That is a huge win. And I, I have to say, I think we thoroughly deserve that. They hit the target twice all night. We created much more than them. And Ursan was yet again fantastic. Glorious stuff. In case you're interested, which I assume you are, we are now seven points clear of everybody below us. Somehow. Um, they've just, they've drawn a lot of games against each other, which has really helped us get into that position. We've actually lost more games than anyone apart from Norgeland in this group, but we're seven points clear now. There's a real good chance of us actually finishing second. What? Five games to go, seven point gap. We can just get through a couple more away games, which we've won two of. There's a real chance. Look, plus 49 goal difference as well for FC Copenhagen. They're going to get a record points tally this year. They've won 25 of 31 games. That is astonishingly good. Right then, guys, we're back on the day of the game against Odense, which was literally two days later. We played Sunday and now Tuesday, so our players are going to be knackered. But we kind of have to go full strength here because there's a chance to get to a second consecutive Danish Cup final. Although... There is at least the sort of fallback that I think we might well be able to qualify for the Europa League via the league, um, even if we somehow don't get through this game. I feel like we should get through this game. We've beaten Odense comfortably this season before, and hopefully we can do it again today, even with a slightly rotated, well, not rotated side, a slightly tired side. So what I am going to change, though, is I'm actually going to bring Tonya Harding here into a support role um, for this sort of central midfielder. We're going to have him um, hold position, perhaps, and play a few risky passes to just kind of keep the play ticking over in that position. That's kind of what I want to do with him. Have him a bit like a bit of a workhorse in that channel. Uh, that's kind of what we're going to try and test out the role today. Except, of course, it won't actually be him in that role. It will be Caleb Morley uh, because he's just better for that role at the moment. So we'll, we'll give him a little run out in that role, see if he performs better today. Still not sure about this particular role here. I'm tempted to move the attacking playmaker back and put someone else in here. Since they are a little bit on the knackered side, I am going to drop Bravo today and bring Svenny in. Uh, because I feel like he needs a chance to get some goals and maybe today could be that day and he can hopefully get a bit of his confidence back. Um, God, Ersan, 39 goals, Bravo, 29, and Svenningsen, 18. That's still a lot for someone who's probably still only 17 years old. Remember that. He is still so young. On the bench, Karatala, Cormio, Santos, Bravo, Safi, Kovalchik, and Zahidi, the usual bunch. I fully expect them to go and win this match. I really, really do. They've, they've been excellent lately and hopefully we can continue that today. I do worry a little bit about... Um, some of our players in terms of the fitness levels, particularly Rogers Jr. and Moskutsa, but just something we're going to have to deal with, really. I want to see us get through uh, to the final, and today is a, a, as good a chance as we're going to have to get there. Remember, we had to knock out FC Copenhagen to get to the final last time. 
this year, their actual, their actual path to the final is far more simple than it was in the previous year. Uh, so you never know what we're capable of. There's Bromby and Sunigusk in the other game today. So, uh, I mean, obviously of the two, I'd rather play against Sunigusk, but Bromby are clearly a beatable team too. And Shishi straight back in the team and straight back into the key positions there with the header in 38 seconds. We're looking pretty much in total control of the possession in this game. And the passing has been fantastic. Uh, Rogers Jr. Ball in again. Oh, the goal is going to come soon, you feel like. 15 minutes in and we've already dominated. Svenningsen has been fantastic in this opening 20 minutes. He really ha... <laughs> uh, Almir Hadzovic from a corner puts Odense into the lead in this game because of course they are. Rekdal's ball in. Nobody tracks the runner whatsoever. A simple goal for Odense and they have the lead here in Greenland. Um, Honestly, cannot believe we're losing this match. To be perfectly honest, we've had so many opportunities in this game so far. Um, dominated every possible facet of it. And there you go. That's FM sometimes for you. Shishi picks it up. Blocks. Hansen picks it up. Shishi. And round the post from him again. We're actually playing a bit like Midgeland in the last game, but with better chances. Clausen. We are going to move to attacking around about the half an hour mark if we don't immediately get back level in this game. Um, Rivera does brilliantly. Lever. Just keep that ball moving. Shishi. Oh, so bad. So bad. Oh, God. Oh, I thought they had another one there. That would have probably should have been another one. We're going to go to attacking in this match. I'm shocked, to be honest, at how badly we've performed in terms of actually taking our chances. Like Hansen, saved by Klaas, and again, another save. They're going to be just defending this to the hill. Be a bit of a dumb way to go out, but there you go. Svenningsen again, doing well. Needs to pick a cross out. Ursan, off the crossbar, in on the rebound, and it's one all and thoroughly deserved. Ursan with another goal. We've been dominant in this game and deserve the lead. Um, bit of an early scare, though, for us so far. Svenningsen has played fantastically well, getting into channels, creating chances, having shots, but no goals yet, though. Um, Ursan probably should be scoring this initially. Gets to the rebound, though, and I think that's deflected as well. But I think that's his 40th goal in all competitions this year. That is sensational for him, considering how much he's cost us. It's also worth noting, though, considering Ursan scored the goal, Svenningsen is currently on an eight, and he hasn't even got an assist to his name. That's how well he's played against these guys today. Bure. How is this happening? They've scored with two shots on target. I cannot believe this is happening. Um, I feel like we're, this is one of those days where we're just going to go out the cup, no matter what we do. Um, we've got 40% cross completion as well. It's a great ball in from Furger. Um, Bure gets there, and it's, a, it's, a, it's another goal. Odense are back in front in this game somehow. Do they even want to win this match? They better bloody want to win this match. I honestly can't believe that we're losing this game. Sometimes you just get results like that, but hopefully we can pull it back, basically. I feel like Julien. Is that Pierre-Yves Julien, our former player, the French lad? Svenningsen. In for... Oh, no, no, don't worry. Just keep the pressure on them. Hansen's ball in. And it is a penalty to us. Thank goodness for that. Svenningsen will take it because Bravo isn't on the pitch. Jonas, this is your chance to not redeem yourself. Uh, just get some form back. Find some confidence. You've played extraordinarily well today. And now he has a goal to his name to really sort of give him a bit of extra confidence. He's been sensational in this match before he's got the goal. I think it's almost undoubted that Jonas Svenningsen will win man of the match. Also, this was a bloody good penalty. That's Harry Kane-esque. 2-2 two -two here in the cup. Right, let's go for it still. Right, so I'm going to make some changes at this point because things have not looked good for certain players. Leiva's having a terrible time, so we're going to get safety in for him. Ursan isn't playing brilliantly, but Hansen certainly isn't. Um, what other options are we really thinking here? I'm thinking maybe even get... No, what would we bring Zahidi on? Let's bring on Mariano Bravo. Uh, Svenningsen's doing his darndest to get us this win here and is definitely going to be man of the match, if nothing else. Rogers Jr. now. Find the ball in, clear away. Morley. Santos is going, oh, all the way up for Muscuza. Can he find a cross? He does. It's all the way in, and Juan Shishi there makes it 3-2 to B67. Moskuts with the assist, Shishi with the goal. You can't say we didn't deserve it on the night. We've played excellently from an attacking perspective, just been a bit defensively lax at times. I, I was very surprised that Santos did not take this on as a shot, but instead he's unselfish, puts it out wide for Moskuts. Don't know how this gets through, everyone, but Shishi's in there and puts it in the bottom corner. How important is he to our team? Right, we're going to go back to standard, though. I might even try hitting early crosses because we're at 44% cross completion as well in this game. I'm going to go back to standard, just kind of keep the play nice and sensible for the rest of this match and try to not do a round of Shishi's been sensational. He's given uh, Svenny a run for his money for player of the match here. Oh, God, no. Rekdal, Furga. It sometimes just feels like the game is determined to not let you win, doesn't it? Okay. Like, it just feels like that sometimes. They've had three shots on target and scored all of them. And when he put this out here, I thought, you know what? That's probably going in the back of the net. It's a great goal, but my life. Right, okay. Back on to attacking it is. I'm going to keep it on hit early crosses, though. 
Um, because we've just got such a huge cross completion. We might as well make the most of it. Santos now with a chance. And he's put it around the post. How are we not winning this game? Well, if nothing else, it's certainly turned into a much more entertaining um, cup semi-final than I imagined it was going to be. I thought we'd just sort of steamroll them. And I guess tactically and on the uh, statistics we have, but not on the score sheet. And that's kind of what matters. And Bravo makes it 4-3 now. Mariano Bravo off the bench, spending some more claim the assist. Pretty much wrapping up that man of the match like performance for him tonight. Um, maybe we just leave it on attacking. I don't know what to do at this point. Lovely work again from Shishi. Santos puts it around the corner. Svenningson slips it into a space and Bravo just drills it into the top corner. Lovely old job. Again, I think I will go back to uh, standard though. They've now moved to a 3-4-3 type of system for the final few moments of this game. I think this is either going to finish 5-3 or 4 all. Um, I have a horrible feeling that their next chance, although they haven't really created much since then. Um, but you never know what they're capable of with those three strikers up top. Raven, well won by Santos. Glorious stuff. Svenningson is going past a couple of players. This is what I like to see from him. And he wins us a corner. Well done, Johan. Lump it down the field. Win that header again. He doesn't actually win it, but it doesn't matter. Defensively, we've not been strong today at all. They've really had a bit of an off day. Bravo, doesn't win the header. That's poor. Oh, God. Win that pat. Well done, Pat Curtin. Bravo, terrible touch, but he does keep it in play at least. Rogers Jr. Oh, God. No, we're fine. Morley. Safey. And again, won by them. Rivera does sort of well. Oh, it's, it's offside. I think that's going to be it. I think we are going to go to the cup final. Um, in a more complicated fashion than I had imagined. There you go. B67-4, Odense 3. Better side on the night by far. But they scored three goals against us and made that bloody hard. Ursan, Svenningson, Shishi and Bravo. Probably our three best players. Uh, four best players getting the goals for us in this game. Svenningson, though, 80% of his head has won as well. And nine on the day. Man of the match for him. Thoroughly deserved. We just go forward a day. And as you can see, Bromby won 3-0 over Sunio. So we will be playing against Bromby in the Danish Cup final. Let's find out when that's going to be so we can plan the next video. For whatever reason, it's not saying that we're in the final against Bromby. It still says unknown, even though the game is finished with the other one. I don't know. But the point is, there's two uh, two Bromby games straight away. Didn't we do this with Kurgan last season as well? Or was that? No, it was Silke Ball, wasn't it? So next episode is obviously going to be uh, the Danish Cup final. It just makes no sense to not do that. And we'll have to do what, kind of what we did last season again, uh, which means that we've got games away at Bromby, a home to Norgeland. That's definitely winnable, as we know. And then away at Oldborg, then a home to Copenhagen. I genuinely think we can do do a good job of finishing third at the lowest now that we've done well there but the next episode is going to be the danish cup final because we love a good danish cup final what do you reckon can we win it for a second season in a row and guarantee european football no matter what we do in the league i'm going to try and do it through the league though i'd like to see us finish as high as possible um but yeah let me know what you think in the comments are we going to win the danish cup for a second season in a row or will bromby prove to be too good for us um as they're a much better team than kurgi were last season it'd be great if we could anyway if you have enjoyed this episode and a couple of great wins particularly the midland one then do drop a like on the video that'd be simply perfect and if you're new to the channel of course hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in your inbox every single tuesday thursday and sunday and i will join you guys in the next episode for the danish cup final that's going to be a cracker i'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching Bye bye